In the first problem of section 3.2, we're asked to graph the function g of t equals t cubed plus t squared minus 2t. Uh, the first step is to find out what the zeros of the function are. Now, uh, I've already factored it here for you. And you can see that uh, the zeros are t equals uh, t equals 0, t equals 1, and t equals minus 2. So, now, next little bit of information that we'll get about the graph of this function is uh, where it's increasing, where it's decreasing, and at the same time we'll be able to find out what its uh, max and mins are. So, first um, start out by taking the derivative. G prime of t will be equal to 3t squared plus 2t minus 2. Now, if we use the quadratic formula to find out when this is equal to 0, see that t is equal to you know, negative 2 plus or minus uh, square root of 4, negative 4 times 3 times negative 2 uh, over uh, 2 times 3, or 6. Now this is going to be equal to negative 1 third plus or minus how uh, we can factor out square root 4 or 2, which will leave us with square root of 1 plus 3 times 2, or square root of 7, over 6. So our possible max and, uh, maximums and minimums are negative 1 third plus or minus square root 7, over 3, which if you work out the actual numerical values, values see that this is, these are equal to uh, t equals about minus 1.21 and uh, about positive 0 0.54, uh, maybe 548. Uh, now, in order to tell whether these are actually maximums or minimums or possibly neither, we need to look at the sign of the first derivative on the intervals uh, infinity to negative 1.2 and the intervals or the interval with these two points as endpoints and also the sign of the derivative on the interval 0.58 to infinity. All right, so let's just take a sample point to the left of negative 1.21. Uh, let's just say negative 2. Now, g prime of negative 2 will be, all right, well, 3 times 4 is 12, uh, plus 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, so 12 minus 4 is 8, minus 2 is positive 6. So we see that the sign of the derivative is positive on this interval. Now, the easiest point between negative 1.21 and 0.548 is probably going to be 0. So if we look at g prime of 0, we say that's negative 2, which is less than 0. So our function is decreasing on that interval. And finally, let's take 1. This is our sample point uh, on the interval 0.548 to infinity. And you see that g prime of 1 is 3 plus 2 minus 2 is 3, which is positive. So our function is increasing there. And this also implies that if our function is increasing and then decreasing, negative 1.21 is going to be a local max. And similarly, our function is going from decreasing to increasing at the point 0.548, which means that 0.548 is a local min. 
Now, I'm going to summarize the information here. So we have a local max at t equals negative 1.21 and local min at t equals 0 0.548. Next, we'll look at the concavity of the graph and see what are the inflection points, that is, where does the concavity change, if it changes at all, and what, are, what is the concavity at various points on the graph. So to do this, we'll use the second derivative test. So g double prime of t will be equal to, uh, I erased the first derivative, but recall that g prime of t was 3t squared plus 2t minus 2. So g double prime will be 6t plus 2. If we set this equal to 0 and solve for t, we see that t is equal to minus 2 over 6 or minus 1 third. So we have possible inflection point at t equals minus one third, but we need to check and see that, uh, make sure that the concavity actually does change before we can call it an, an inflection point. So again, we look at uh, the intervals negative infinity to negative one third and one third to infinity, and evaluate the second derivative at a sample point in each of those intervals. So easiest sample point in this interval will probably just be negative one. So g prime of negative 1 is negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. So it means concave down since uh, the derivative is negative at this point. Now uh, let's take the point t equals 0. And we see that g prime of 0 is 2. It's positive. So we have concave up on the interval uh, negative one-third to infinity. Now, the last thing that we would need to check are um, vertical and horizontal asymptotes. But we're dealing with a polynomial here, so we look and we see that uh, there aren't, this function is defined everywhere, and no matter what finite value we plug in, uh, we'll have, get out a finite value. We see that it's not undefined anywhere, so it has no vertical asymptotes. Uh, and also from the uh, first derivative test, we see that uh, the function was increasing at a local, local min at t equals 0 0.58, and the sign of the derivative was positive on the interval 0 0.58 to infinity. So we see that it's constantly increasing and actually does not reach an asymptote at that point. Similarly for when uh, t is equal to negative uh, 1.21, so local max, so that uh, our function just goes to infinity as t goes to negative infinity. So now that we have this information, we can actually go ahead and put it all together and draw a quick sketch of the graph. So we know the zeros are at uh, t equals 0, 1, and negative 2. So those will be the first points that we draw. So 0, 1, and negative 2. And next, let's draw the maximum and minimum points. So when t equals negative 1.21, which would be somewhere right around here, uh, our function, or our, uh, the value of the function, I don't recall what it is specifically, but if you plug it into your calculator, you'll see that it's, it is indeed positive. And when t is equal to 0.548, I believe it's somewhere right around negative 0.63. Now we have max and minimum points plotted. 
we can kind of fully connect the dots here, but we just need to pay attention to the concavity of the graph as we do so. So we know that the only inflection point is at minus one third. And when we're to the left of the inflection point, our graph is concave down. So the graph is going to look something like this on the interval negative infinity to one third. And then from one third to infinity, um, and I just realized this should be like this since our x intercept is, or one of our x intercepts is at zero, not negative one third. And from the inflection point, negative one third to infinity, our graph is going to be concave up. So it's going to look something like that. So you can see how we use each little piece of uh, information about the graph, like its zeros, its asymptotes, uh, whether it's increasing, decreasing, local minimum and maximums, and concavity to get a pretty good idea of what the graph actually looks like.